Hi, welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I am Steve Smith. I hope you all had a great Christmas. We did. We're shooting this on uh, on the Guru's brand new iPad that he got for Christmas, and I've broken down and got myself a new microphone so that I hopefully don't have to try to talk loud, which is something that I don't do much any anymore anyway. Um, we're uh, we're kind of in the saddle between the uh, uh, between Christmas and the first of the year, and we're we're in our relaxation mode, kind of kind of coming down from that high of uh, the Christmas holiday and and looking forward to what's going to be coming up in the future. Uh, I'm looking forward to winter, and I've had him put on uh, the front card, which was the the, the front intro for for uh, this video. That's a picture out our and out the back of our house that I took last year uh, after a nice snow, and uh, and that's. That's what I'm looking forward to now. So I asked him to put it up there because I like looking at it and I think it's pretty. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, jobs today. Um, the, the the jobs within a group. Um, you know, I've I've seen uh, on some other channels lately uh, who have done a really good job talking about the um, the individual uh, jobs and functions of, of people within a group. Um, whether that group is, is a community or a mag or a, you know, whatever you want to call it. We, we <coughs> call it different <coughs> in my group. But um, <coughs> whether, you're, whether it's a family or, or a group of individuals for a common purpose or a, or a work situation or whatever, uh, central to the functioning of that group is the, the, the um, proper function of each job by the individuals responsible for them. Um, when when people understand the, the the reason and the importance of their jobs, uh, they do them well, and and things run along pretty smoothly. When people don't quite understand how important their particular job is, it can uh, inhibit their uh, uh, desire to do it well. Uh, they'll be thinking about other things that they want to do, ought to do, would rather do, whatever, and of course that can have a compromising effect on the group as a whole. Uh, I wrote about this in my third book, The Renewal, and I, I want to read just a few um, paragraphs from that because I think it illustrates it uh, fairly well. As I, as I mentioned in a previous uh, video, I, I wrote much in these books as kind of uh, letters to my kids that as they read them when they're older, they'll they'll recognize these lessons and be able to take something from them. They're lessons that I learned naturally throughout the, the course of my life, and, and probably many of you have too. But, uh, but I, I thought that I'd, I'd kind of throw my two cents in here on, on the, you know, the individual roles within a group. And uh, simply by reading what I've already written, uh, and, and and when I read my own stuff, you might discover why I have not yet made an audio book of this. I tend I tend to stumble over my own words a little bit, but we'll see if I can do better today. Uh, to set up the scene here, <coughs> Tom Murphy is the head of intelligence for uh, Stonemont. Uh, Tom is a retired lieutenant colonel from the Marines who was in intelligence and anti-terrorism in in the Marines. Uh, and now he's uh, chief of intelligence for Stonemont. They have several uh, scout recon teams in the city. And for those of you who haven't read the, the books, the scouts are kind of the military arm of Stonemont. Uh, and the recon teams are specialized even within the scouts. And so they have several of these teams in the city to go take a look around. There's some things uh, that they've seen coming out of the city that concern them. They want to, to, to kind of find out what's going on in there. Um, Obviously, like, uh, like, like in, in so many uh, communities and organizations and societies, the, the military aspect is held up, you know, especially for young men to be something to be desired, and especially those, uh, those special units are, are something that every young man likes to, to dream about and aspire to. And we're about to, to, to meet one of those young men here as Tom is getting ready to meet his family for, uh, for dinner. But he's making his last rounds, and he's gone up into a watchtower, uh, the highest watchtower at, at Stonemont, to look out above. Uh, uh, that's all right. The guru just coughed. No big deal, buddy. Hey, we all got. It's a going around, right? Uh, 
So he, he's gone up into a watchtower to kind of take a look around before he uh, goes to dinner. And he has, has, has come upon the, the young man who's up there on duty, the sentry, uh, who's on duty in the, in the watchtower at that time. Um, so I'll, I'll start right here. They knew very little about what lay to the east over the Missouri state line, with the exception of a brief contact with the Bates County Sheriff's Posse had made no contacts in that direction. The sprawling Kansas City metropolitan area was the monster resting closely to their northeast, and that was their biggest unknown and concern. Hopefully the recon teams would come back with some answers. Twinkling lights drew his attention to the near northwest, and he put in the binoculars back to his eyes to look towards Jamestown. Street lights had been installed at the corners of the square, and the lights from individual homes and the Jamestown Inn combined, combined with them <clears throat> to create a sparkling island in the surrounding sea of darkness. Something about it made him smile. See something good, sir? asked the young signalman. Tom set the binoculars back down and nodded. Normalcy, he said. He looked at the young man. What's your name, son? Zack, sir. How are things going for you, Zack? Zack smiled. Very good, sir. My family has a place in Jamestown. My dad runs one of the construction crews. My mom runs things at the home. And my little brother and sister are excited to start school. <coughs> Tom nodded. And how about you? How are you enjoying what you're doing? Zack gave a half nod combined with a shrug. I like it okay, but it gets kind of boring. I don't feel like I'm doing much. His eyes grew excited as he looked at Tom. I really want to be on a scout team. That would be more exciting. Tom nodded in understanding, looking out into the dark. Every young man wanted adventure, which was good. It was how most of the great things in history had been accomplished. But in focusing on that, they often missed the importance of the less dramatic but just as critical basics. Right now, he said, we have three teams in the city running recon. Their job is to take a look around, not get caught, and come back to tell us what they saw. Each one of those men is a 136th piece of that operational pie. He turned to look at Zack. On the other hand, we have one man, you, communicating with and keeping an eye on the other towers in order to let us know if there is trouble coming. You have the whole pie, 100 percent. He looked back into the darkness. If one of those scouts makes a mistake, chances are his teammates will pick up the slack or plug the hole. If you make a mistake, hundreds of people could die. Maybe all of us. He turned back to look at the young man. With that in mind, who would you say has the more important job tonight? Zack stared at Tom, his eyes wide. I never thought of it that way, sir. Tom nodded. But others above you have, and they chose you to be here doing this job. What do you think about that? Zack continued to stare at Tom, his mouth suddenly feeling dry. I, I guess this job is more important than I thought, sir. I never thought about that. Tom nodded. I am trusting you with the lives of those I most love in the world, Jack. So are Jim, Christian, Mike, Bill, and everyone else down there, even those who don't realize they are. He stepped closer to Zack, putting his hand on the younger man's shoulder and looking him in the eye. I'm going to go finish my rounds, and then I'm going to meet my wife and kids at the Jamestown Inn for supper. And I'm going to do that feeling secure, not because 36 scouts are in the city, but because you are here. Do you understand? Zack nodded, suddenly feeling warm. Yes, sir. Tom patted Zack's shoulder. Have a good night, son, and thank you for your good work. Zack straightened up as Tom turned to climb down the ladder. Good night, sir. Thank you. Tom stopped and looked at Zack. Don't ever forget how important your job is. Zack shook his head. I won't, sir. The, the, the lesson in that is that there is no unimportant job. Uh, especially when we're young, we're always in a hurry. We want to do what we think is the, the top, the best, the most exciting, and whatever. Uh, in, in the past, and still in good situations today, uh, that excitement is tempered by, by more experienced uh, men uh, who kind of keep us in rain on that. Uh, when it's not kept in check by more experienced people, 
that that excitement and that desire and that 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 biting against the bit can get people in trouble when they think they ought to be doing more than they are or should be doing more than they are or should be appreciated more than they are or whatever and and that gets in the way of them developing uh, both as a person and as a a a, a contributing uh, operational uh, slice of the pie that they're part of um, so all I want to share today is no matter remember that no matter what your position is within your group it's an important position it's an important job do it to the best of your ability uh, and if there's something that that interests you that's different uh, learn about it do what it takes to progress to that point but until then do the job you've got and do it the best you can because other people are dependent on you. Uh, with that, I'll say goodbye. And uh, I've, I've, I've kind of come out of the, the busy season, so I'm looking forward to putting some more out there in the next few days and, and from then on and getting back to writing on the books. So I'll tell you bye-bye and uh, have a great day. And remember that we prepare well today, and that means preparing your abilities and, and functions within whatever group you're in or will be in uh, in order to live well tomorrow. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.